So patients with high risk diffuse large B cell lymphoma and high grade B cell lymphoma remain in need of improved therapies. We know that patients in these groups uh, still do relatively well with RCHOP, but about 50% or more than 50% will eventually relapse with their disease. And so there's still some work to be done in these high risk patient populations. Uh, many studies have previously tried to improve up upon frontline therapy by the addition of novel agents to RCHOP or other intensive chemo regimens, but largely they failed to demonstrate a uh, consistent benefit over the standard. And there's probably a number of reasons why this is the case. Uh, there's been increased toxicity from the addition of novel agents, reduced dose intensity of the chemotherapy backbone, and uh, over-inclusion of patients at lower risk therefore diluting out the potential benefit of the novel agents. The coalition study has attempted to address some of these issues with frontline studies in high-risk diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Firstly, uh, the study aims to include um, a highly effective novel immunotherapeutic agent in glofitumab, which is a CD20, CD3 biospecific antibody with very high rates of uh, response and complete response in multiply relapsed and refractory patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Uh, so the theory is that by including that early on in the treatment algorithm, we might be able to pre prevent some uh, future relapses. Um, the study also has some unique design features. So first of all, um, we are focusing on a very high risk patient population, attempting to include patients who have, urgent, uh, who have disease at urgent need of treatment and high burden, high risk features. Um, so we have an inclusion criteria of an IPI score of three, the NCCN IPI score of four or higher, or the presence of double hit lymphoma. And by using these inclusion criteria, we, we think we are recruiting a very high risk patient population. The second feature is the ability to recruit patients either before chemotherapy or after a single cycle of RCHOP chemo. And that enables clinicians and centers to start treatment quickly on patients with very high burden disease that can't wait to get onto a clinical study. And by, enabling, by allowing that, we've enabled recruitment of patients with high risk, high burden disease. And our median time to first treatment initiation after diagnosis is 15 days, which is significantly improved on other studies of CHOP combination. Uh, so the study itself has two arms. Uh, in addition to the use of glofitumab, the bispecific antibody, that's combined with either RCHOP chemotherapy or um, polar RCHP, which utilizes polituzumab vedotin um, plus a modified CHOP, um, which we know from the Polaric study has uh, some benefit over RCHOP chemotherapy, which is more pronounced in patients at higher risk of disease. Uh, the study has uh, now recruited uh, almost 80 of the planned patients. Uh, and the interim analysis that we're presenting at this conference is of the first 46 patients who have reached the end of induction uh, response assessment. We found uh, very high rates of overall response, so 100% overall response, and at the end of treatment, a 96% overall response rate and complete response rates in both arms um, between 70 and 80%. Uh, importantly, uh, as I've mentioned before, we do believe we've recruited a very high risk patient population. So um, we've performed total metabolic tumor volume on all baseline PET scans and have demonstrated a median uh, metabolic tumor volume of over 650 cubic centimeters and even up into the four or 5,000 cubic centimeters. Um, very high burden, high risk patients. Um, the safety profile is also really important to consider. Uh, we were very concerned about the potential for um, impacting negatively on the delivery of chemotherapy, and we haven't seen that to be the case. Uh, the relative dose intensity of all of the major chemotherapeutic agents is above 90%. Um, and therefore we've been able to maintain the dose intensity of the chemotherapy backbone uh, without compromising on that by the addition of the glofinumab uh, bispecific antibody. The safety profile is, um, is not unexpected uh, with cytokine release syndrome uh, in, in a proportion of patients, but in almost all cases, bar one, this was grade one cytokine release syndrome, so a fever alone um, without the need for any further intensive supports. Um, other features that have uh, improved the safety of this combination has been the utilization of step-up dosing of glofitumab, uh, like, has, like uh, used in the um, third line plus indication. 
uh, as well as the introduction of glofidumab from cycle two onwards. And this allows debulking of the lymphoma with two cycles of chemo before the glofidumab is added in. And therefore, that has significantly improved the safety profile of glofidumab as it's being used in combination with chemo and after that debulking effect. So in addition to the high rates of complete response, uh, there were a number of patients with partial remissions. There's ongoing work to, um, to look at their outcomes uh, of, partial, of the partial remissions. And on an early look, uh, many of these patients have either converted in a, into a complete response or have maintained their partial remission for extended periods of time. This has raised the question about whether a partial response at the end of a combination chemo and immunotherapeutic um, regimen is, has the same impact as a partial remission after chemo immunotherapy, chemotherapy alone. Um, and so that's gonna require some additional follow-up time to understand that. But it may be that these partial responses at the end of induction therapy uh, may represent an immunological phenomenon uh, and, and not represent active disease. But uh, further follow-up is required to investigate this.